Packer and Durham, 844-SAY-ACCM. We'll get back to your phone calls, tweets, all that good stuff regarding scheduling. But uh, we do have a number of guests, though, for the second half of the show. Yeah, in case you missed Kenny Payne in about 15 minutes, too, the Louisville coach from last week at Amelia mm-hmm. Island. Uh, Boston College hosts Loyola of Maryland in the NCAA Women's Lacrosse Championship uh, coming up this weekend. And it's actually Thursday, I should say, in Newton. And Melanie Welch is here, a uh, great defender for uh, Acacia Walker-Weinstein. Melanie, welcome. Good morning. How are you? Hi, good morning. How are you guys? I'm good. We're super. Uh, Melanie makes her debut on this show. That is correct. Oh, guest number, what is Uh, this? 806. Wow. 806 different guests on the program. (laughs) All right. On a a team that is known for its offensive prowess, I have been told you are the (laughs) defensive stopper. So what's it like (laughs) defending the power of your offense in practice? I'll get to the games in a minute. I just want to know how competitive the practice thing gets. Oh my gosh, they're crazy. It's amazing. Um, It's so much fun. I mean, to go up against some of the best attackers and players in the game right now, um, it's incredible. It's it's a challenge every day. They're amazing. And the things that they pull out, I'm like, what are, how do you even know how to do that? But um, it's, it's so much fun. You not just walk up to Charlotte North and go, you know, just not impressed. Just not impressed. <laughs> you know, or, 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 or you're better I don't off just think that's take, ever happened. Yeah, okay. That might be not a bad move, right? That might be, uh, you know what, Charlotte, we'll worry about that down the road. But you know what, <laughs> seeing the, the kind of offensive firepower that you do in practice, I would assume makes game day actually a little bit easier. Is that Would that be accurate? Yeah, definitely. I think our team prides ourselves on um, not only the attackers that are on the fields every day, but the scout players are so incredible. They make – our job so much easier on game day because practices are so hard. Um, so it is. It's so lucky. But Melanie, Acacia also kind of delivers that mantra, right? You guys, if it's if it's hypothetically Monday through Friday really hard, then Saturday is easy. And it's always kind of – our visits with her have been fascinating because I can see where the culture is built from within to then be displayed on game day. Definitely. We definitely focus on winning each day and doing everything that we can today in order to be able to prepare and win um, on game day. And I think that's something that in Keisha is always pushing us to work as hard as we can every day that we show up. That way, when we show up on the field on the game day, all the pieces can kind of just fall into place. And it's all about execution. And we're, we're really repa- prepared. Melanie, I know that you, uh, as a team, put a lot of, of stock into winning the ACC championship. That, that was on the to-do list. Even though you won the national championship last year, winning the ACC title, we now see it with all the quality teams that are still left in the tournament, that was a goal. That was a big deal. All right, you come up short. How difficult now is it to go, okay, we didn't get that job done, but you know what? Really, the biggest tournament is still upon us, and we're the defending champs. How, how difficult is that transition, or maybe how easy is that transition? Yeah, I think um, where we're lucky is we got to learn a lot from that loss that we had in the ACC championship. And we have another chance right now to, to be together and to play and to show the world uh, how good our team really is. Um, so I think it's super exciting that right now we're entering the NCAA tournament. We've learned so much from our entire season, and now we get to go and put our best foot forward and give it our best shot to win a national championship. All right, and then there's the benefit of playing at home. Uh, and the momentum for your program, obviously, off the national title has been has been pretty pretty steady. What's that been like then to have home games in this event as opposed to traveling to to play the bigger game, if you will? Yeah, um, it's incredible. I mean, the fans in Boston are crazy. There's always so many people at our games, which makes it so much fun. And you kind of look around and you're like, wow, all these people are here to watch us play lacrosse. Like it's, it's amazing. Um, so being at home is, is awesome. It's, it's so much fun. Love it. Now the team you're going to play Loyola, uh, they're 20 and one, their only loss ironically was to Syracuse who's still alive and kicking in the NCAA tournament. What do you know about Loyola and how difficult is this going to be coming up on Thursday afternoon? Yeah, it's going to be a great, a great game. They're, incredible players um they're very well coached a really really well-rounded team um so i think from top to bottom it's going to be it's going to be a fight and it's going to be a battle um and we're just doing everything that we can each day to make sure that we're we're prepared for everything that they'll throw at us on game day um i think it's going to be a lot of fun i mean this is the best part of playing lacrosse at this level is you're playing against the best 
players in the country almost every game. So it's it's so much fun. All right, uh, Melanie, I, I ask you this with with great humbleness. Um, <sighs> the ACC is really good at this sport. Um, I mean, it's really been impressive to watch Syracuse, Carolina, Boston College. I mean, you know, Duke was talented. You guys, though, it, it, it's seemingly you've had these collision courses. How good is this league? And can this league, last year there were two, or actually three, can this league put three back in it again? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, when you look at the ACC and the talent in the ACC from, from top to bottom, whether you're looking at attackers, defenders, middies, goalies, um, there, there's just such incredible players. Um, and I, I totally believe that three teams in the ACC could end up in Final Four weekend. Um, there's, there's no doubt in my mind to whatever team shows up on game day. And I think any team in the ACC is capable of that. Mel, you want to get back to what you do best, and that's play defense. You know, any sport, football, basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever, everybody wants to score, right? Anybody that picks up a sport, <laughs> hey, give me a stick, I want to score. I want to hit a ball, what, whatever it is, all right? But you got to have the want to on the defensive side. I mean, there, there's got to be a, a different kind of a desire, a different kind of build to have the mindset to say, guess what? Yeah, everybody wants to score, but I want to shut somebody down. For you, when did you get that? And was that early or was that kind of an acquired taste as you decide to play sports? Hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think everyone starts off pretty much as a midi, but I think I always kind of liked stopping goals more than I was about scoring the goals. Um, I just think it's so much fun when you're going against all of these players and that one time that you're able to shut someone down, like kind of get like a little adrenaline rush, like, oh yeah, like we just stopped them. Like that's amazing. Um, so I, I love defense, honestly. I think it's a lot of fun. All right. Now, as I understand it, you were a terrific high school athlete. Um, <laughs> not only lacrosse, but also soccer, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what position did you play in soccer? I was a midi and then a defender, I think, to the end. So that transition from the two sports has always been defensive base then for you? Definitely, yeah. Huh. Why, why, why lacrosse over soccer at the end of the day? Um, I think I just realized how much more I love the sport. I mean, mm-hmm. soccer is a great sport. It's still so much fun whenever we play like pickup or something um, before practice. But I don't know. I just I love lacrosse so much. Um, and I'm like super grateful for where it's brought me the last five years. So mm-hmm. I I'm very happy with my choice to play lacrosse. All right. Now, wait a second. Pick up lacrosse, pick up soccer before lacrosse practice. Yeah, I mean, from time to time, we'll, we'll have a fun game, whether uh-huh. it's soccer or kickball or something. Okay, just, so who's uh, good? All right, who's good? Let's just jump right in. Charlotte North uh-huh. is good in is Charlotte North is good in soccer and kickball as she is in lacrosse. I mean, I don't think Charlotte's bad at anything. So, but uh, Andrea Reynolds, she has a rocket of a leg. She's pretty good at kickball. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea Reynolds, rocket leg. Rocket leg. <laughs> rocket leg. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, Got to be careful of Andrea Reynolds in yeah. the kickball game. Uh, by the way, as a defender, uh, we talk about all the scores in this league. I mean, mm-hmm. you see it at practice every day. Charlotte North is just ridiculous, but she's not the only one on your team. Now, we're going to talk to a Megan Terrell coming up uh, next hour. Uh, Jamie Ortega at North Carolina. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's amazing how spectacular – the offensive weapons are in this league. Is that you get a chance to see it every time you play? Yeah, they're incredible players. Incredible players. Um, it's so much fun to watch them at practice too, or when you're watching other games on TV. Um, I mean, everyone is so talented, and they're they're so hardworking, and there's such incredible attackers in the ACC. It's it's insane. All right, Melanie, am I to hear this correct that you're a walk on? <laughs> yeah, you're a walk on to play lacrosse. How in yes. the world? I mean, you've become like a major factor in this deal. And how did, what what was the walk on inspiration at Boston College? Um, honestly, I feel like I just have to be so grateful for the coaches for for giving me a shot. Um, and then I just kind of put my head down, worked hard when I was a little bit younger, freshman or a sophomore. Um, and just everything kind of worked out well for me, I would say. Um, but yeah, I'm just super grateful that I was even given the opportunity to to walk on. Mm. All right, here's our uh, most difficult question. Oh yeah, 
God. And given and well, no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. wait you're going to handle this. You've already breezed through it. This, this, this is going to actually be easy for you. Uh, at Boston College, what has been your hardest class? Um, probably financial econometrics. Break that down for us. Break, break that one down for us. Uh, it's like applying statistics to finance and like financial models. So it's a little complicated, too complicated for me. How'd you do? Come on. You can be honest. I think I ended with a B. So. Oh, that ain't hard. You, it wasn't hard if you made a B. <laughs> no, it was pretty hard. I, I think I got a little lucky with the B. I was going to say some B's are easier than others though. Right. I mean, that, that's the way to look at it. That was a hard B. Yeah, that's a hard. Hey, Melanie, thing. I got something for you. I can show you some math grades where it was really hard, <laughs> and I didn't make a B. <laughs> <laughs> I, Packer can show you some shows where math was really hard, yeah. and I didn't make a B. That would be accurate. That yeah. would be accurate too. That'd well, listen, great. continued success. You guys are a blast to watch, and uh, man, we're rooting for all the ACC teams to get back there, and it'd be incredible to see at least three of them in that Final Four. It'd be sweet. Thank you.